Hello fellow astrophotographers and welcome back to our channel. Today is the unboxing day. The package just arrived with the new William Optics Mini Cat 51. This one is a special uh, Space Cat edition. It's one of the first ones in the Europe market, if not the first one. Um, and it arrived just in time because skies are supposed to be clear in the evening and I will try to capture the Comet Atlas A3 with it. But first, uh, let's open it up see what's inside uh, and I will try to attach the Sony camera, Sony mirrorless camera to it and do a first light uh, of the mountains from our backyard so I'm prepared for the evening. Let's go! It comes with a standard uh, William Optics uh, bag so you can carry it around and it's well protected. Let's open it up. The certification paper protective foam on the top, like usually, and let's take it out. <laughs> it's literally a, a smaller brother of the standard Red Cat 51, much shorter and more compact. Okay, let's take a look at the accessories. Uh, we have Allen key set with screws, um, and mine also came with the mini guide scope. I think this is not included uh, in uh, all the units, but came with mine. We will not be taking a special look at this one. It's a standard William Optics mini guide scope. Okay, let's take a closer look. Uh, uh, it's much smaller than its bigger brother, uh, which means it's more compact and easier to carry for field work. So I think it will come handy today for the comet chasing. Um, let's go over the features from the front to the back. Uh, First, we have the standard cover with integrated uh, Bechtino mask and after that we have dew shield and 51 millimeters of aperture. And speaking of aperture, this one is much faster, twice as fast as its bigger brother. It has f3.5 focal ratio with 178 millimeters of focal length. Now working towards the back, we have integrated focuser. I love this design because it prevents sagging and tilt. This is the same as on the other Red Cats. This unit comes with dual mounting dovetail, standard ring, and I think uh, it comes standard with the handlebar for the guide scope, which is different uh, in comparison to the other Red Cats where this accessory is an extra. Now working towards the back, uh, we have the field rotator, which is also standard with Red Cats, but we also have a bit hidden, but I think it's here. The rotator bolt has to be removed in order to undo this ring, and this ring hides the tilt adjustment bolts. Uh, I have demonstrated how to adjust this tilt on the Red Cat 71. You can check uh, the video, I have put it in the description of this video. Let's put this back for now. Okay, at the back of the telescope we have M48 thread as well as M45. If we remove this adapter, this is also standard with all the red cats. The same design. Let's put this back so we don't get dust inside. Okay, now uh, some general specifications um, to finish this off. The tube length is uh, 210 millimeters. The dew shield outer diameter is 80 millimeters, same as the Red Cat 51. Um, this means you can attach the same accessories to the dew shield, including our uh, Red Cat 51 flat panel. It will fit just the same. Um, let's cover this up. And the total weight of the telescope is about uh, 2.3 kilograms. That's about it, let's now attach my Sony mirrorless camera and try to perform a first light on our mountains. Okay, so now let's attach the camera. Uh, now I don't have the Sony E-mount directly to M48 on the telescope, but I do have Sony E-mount to Canon mount and Canon mount to the M48. Now this is a bit hackish, but with the mini cat petrol design, it should not be a problem and I should be able to, re to reach uh, the focus just fine. So let's put this on.
Okay, it's ready for the first light. Now, before I take it out, just a quick comparison with its bigger brother, the Space Cat 51. Let's see how they look together. Okay, let's uh, take a quick look dimensions-wise. We can see that it's much shorter. You have to look from the camera towards the front. Um, but the Mini Cat is a bit wider, but this is due to the integrated focuser design. Okay, let's take it out. Okay, as suspected, uh, reaching the focus was really not an issue. It was actually almost spot on. Just a few minor adjustments were necessary. Uh, so we are basically ready to image the comet. In the evening, I will head uh, up higher towards the mountains with the car and will take uh, my kids with me so they can check out the comet too. And hopefully, if the sky stays clear, I will be able to image it with the Mini Cat 51. It will be mounted on this uh, standard tripod I'm also using to make these videos. Um, mm -hmm. So it will be a really lightweight setup and I will be able to carry it higher from the parking spot. Let's see how it goes. Now once we departed from home, the clouds started getting thicker and thicker and covered most of the sky. Now I still hoped that we might uh, catch a glimpse of the comet through a hole in the clouds, but uh, when we reached the shooting location, uh, the situation just got worse. Um, the sky was totally overcast and also there was some fog uh, rolling in. But still the kids enjoyed the trip, we had a good time uh, and I found a good location for next time. So here's a short time lapse of the fog moving in and out of our location and uh, some of uh, the valley visible on the shots. I hope you still enjoy this short time lapse. And next time I hope I manage to catch the comet with uh, the William Optics Mini Cat 51. Stay tuned and as always, Clear skies.